friends, this is Prashant from all of you in today's special video lecture in which we are going to learn about mountains, plateaus and plains. Now all these three things, that is mountains, plateaus and plains, uh, are part of major landforms of our planet Earth. As you can see on the screen, there are many things like, say for here, uh, say for example here you see mountains, then glaciers and river source, uh, morines and um, then you have alluvial fan, harbor, strait and many things uh, which uh, we are going to learn in our future discourses. But for now on we are going to focus on some basic things regarding mountains, plateaus and plains. So let's move on dear friends. Now understanding major landforms. Now in our previous discussions we have learned about atmosphere, we have learned about lithosphere, hydrosphere and before that we have learned about some basic things regarding geography that includes uh, uh, the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, how time works, um, the impact or, or we can say the uh, the application of uh, latitudes and its relations with heat and the other things that are associated with human lives and natural resources. So once we are up to date with all that basic things uh, we can now easily move on and learn different landforms. Right? Now the surface of our earth is not the same everywhere. Right? It is uneven and our earth has again infinite variety of landforms right there are not any fixed variety but there are infinite variety of landforms as you can see from this picture here it itself that there are many different things right but i would like to tell all of you that uh, at present you don't have to worry about all these different things we are going to learn these three things, we are going to focus on these three things and I'm sure as we move ahead uh, for based on these three things you'd be able to understand all these tiny details that you can see on the screen, right? So the surface of our earth is not same everywhere, yes exactly we can see it from this picture itself, right? This is a general picture and if you go through the physical map of your world or you may also go through this physical map of Asia or India in that as well you will find generally speaking all different uh, major land forms right so so far what we know is that our earth has infinite variety of land forms now the main reason for variety in land form is due to two continuous process now these two continuous processes uh, keeps on going all the time as we are talking right now these things are taking place. The first is internal process. Now we know very well that uh, there are different layers of uh, our planet Earth. Uh, we are living on the surface and below surface we have two different layers as well. Now some part of this uh, internal part of our Earth is formed of liquid magma right and due to the uh, rotation of earth on its own axis uh, there is also a movement going on within uh, this liquid part of our earth and the other thing is because this part is liquid and it is hot so there are some parts that are getting they are getting hot and due to convention uh, they are rising about they are settling down and again there so there is a cycle going on underneath our earth as well and because and this you can call it as internal process now don't worry about too much details regarding these things again as I told you uh, some of the things as we move ahead in geography uh, it will become simple for you to understand at the moment it may seem a bit strange or it may uh, seem a bit tough for you to understand it but rest assured I will break down all the things uh, in our future discussion right so there are two basically two uh, continuous processes. One is internal process, upliftment and sinking of Earth's surface at several places. So at some places the Earth is getting uplifted, that means the part of lithosphere is rising above and at some places 
the lithosphere part is sinking and because of this internal process landforms on the surface keeps on changing <coughs> now there is another process that is that we can uh, call external process now this external process by name itself we can say that uh, it is happening on the exterior part of the earth that basically means the surface of the earth now the continuous wearing down and rebuilding of the land surface is part of this external process wearing away is not Snow will get deposited where deposit things. So three things that uh, plays a major part in erosion and deposition is wind, water, and ice. You can remember it by WWI or you can remember it by WIW or IWW. Uh, depends whatever is easy. remember it's wind water and now so there are three major
then you find this sort of patterns forming and if you imagine the same thing regarding uh, the lithosphere then when two parts or two plates of lithosphere when they colliding with each other and the elevation that takes place The reason is this are uh, other example of fold mountains and you also find uh, in India as well or in the other parts like Appalachian mount mountains in North America, mountains in Russia and Aravali range uh, that is uh, passing through Rajasthan. Mount Abu is a famous place. Uh, These are some of the examples of fold mountains. So now we know the reason for the formation of fold mountain. It is the convergence of two plates because of that the elevation takes place and this elevation is known as or well, this mountains are known as fold mountains right friends the other type of mountain is known as block mountain now as I told you at the starting of this lecture that sinking and upliftment takes place it is a continuous process that is going on and uh, because of sinking and upliftment uh, the mountains that you find are or the mountains that form due to this thing are known as <coughs> block mountain as you can see from this picture itself that this part over here is sinking and this part or this part here is uplifting and because of that we uh, see that mountains are formed so these are known as block mountain and the uplifting part is known as host and the sinking part is known as graben right so easy to understand again this is the second type of mountain which is known as block mountain the third one is volcanic mountain now from the name itself you can um, gather that uh, this are formed because of volcanic activity yes the magma chamber it finds a um, there is a main vent and through this main vent uh, the uh, volcano or the magma comes out on the surface of the earth then it gets uh, cooled down uh, because the surface temperature is quite lower compared to this part of the earth and uh, then it solidifies and then we have a mountain which is known as volcanic mountain in India we have only one uh, there are volcanic mountains in India no doubt but uh, active volcano if you may say then that is available or that is located in Andabar and Nicobar Island that is the only one we have volcanic active volcano sort of things apart from that there are other places um, or some other examples of uh, volcanic mountains are uh, Mount Kilimanjaro the highest peak of Africa which is again a tourist destination and Mount Fujiyama. Mount Fujiyama is quite famous in, in Japan. Uh, it is a, a, a sort of their spiritual hub as well, this place Fujiyama. So that is an example. These two are example of uh, volcanic mountains, right? Now mountains and life. As I told you earlier when we started this lecture that we are not going to just focus on these three things we are going to learn some subtle things as well some important things that are associated with mountains right so first thing is as we know that mountains are generally speaking in higher altitudes so the environment is inhospitable for
required to send goods and services to higher now we know it very well that uh, if you go to mountain area I'm sure you might have visited uh, some mountain places or hill stations and you find that you cannot get everything that is available on an urban area of a plains like say for example you won't find everything that is available to you in Mumbai in places of uh, some higher places of uh, Kashmir or Himachal Pradesh or Uttarakhand and the reason is that you would have to spend more energy when I say more energy it may, you can take it as uh, human energy you can take it as mechanical energy or uh, energy in form of fuel right you require more energy to send goods and services to higher altitudes so naturally things are going to be a bit expensive isn't it it's going to be a bit costly because say for example if you have to transport one kilo of rice to uh, from one place to another which are located on planes right or the surface is quite easy one then it's going to be you would require less energy and less fuel but imagine if you have to transport something uh, to a higher altitude and the total run is 200 kilometers so you won't be going straight right you won't climb uh, vertically you will go round and round you would be circling the whole mountain and then finally you will reach at the top place where all the hotels or other things are located so more energy more cost the good thing about mountains is that because they have unique uh, flora and fauna you find uh, mountains are good source of herbal particular health products uh, that we find in the market or, or the most of the companies are of, uh, plant species right uh, herbs and herbs in the mountain range so they are good source of herbal med medicine when you hear this word or read this word herbal medicine examination right when I say we all I mean you all it is not enough take this that there are things like have a dedicated history known as uh, Ayush uh, I it is promoting all the Ayurvedic and, and all this alternative all the patients for uh, And uh, uh, there was a video of uh, a famous Bollywood star Akshay Kumar. He visited a place in South India and he was explaining how uh, Ayurveda has been helpful to him for the last 25 years and he's uh, promoting it as well. And there are, if you go to YouTube channels and if you do a little bit of searching, you'll find that it's not only in India but in other parts of the world, particularly in the developed countries as well people are moving towards Ayurveda now what can this mean like what does it mean for India now imagine if Ayurveda at the moment of course it is working it is uh, 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 spreading uh, throughout the world so it is going to bring more business 
right for our country now we already have mountain ranges uh, particularly the Himalayan ranges which are good source of herbal products right natural herbal trees herbs and sherbs and based on this many industries can be formed as well this means Since a couple of years, uh, since the last two years, I've been that uh, India is also pushing for sports uh, in this part, particularly the mountain part. Uh, I remember clearly there was some paragliding competition that took place uh, two years ago in India. That was the first time this was held in India. Uh, uh, upstream of Ganga, the new. And over there, you, you can have bungee jumping and other things, and all this. Thing. The potential of into that. This economic development does not impact uh, the ecology. It should not harm uh, the, the flora and fauna or it should not create any negative impact on this natural resources. The economic development, all uh, whenever you are talking about any economic development uh, in today's world, you cannot uh, neglect development or
now low located with a hotter place and if you now the earth we know that places of like russia and northern part of china are quite cold compared to parts of india now naturally if these parts which are colder are going to have high pressure and the parts of india which are much hotter than this part are going to have low pressure so all the wind from this high pressure of russia china and mongolia is going to travel towards the low pressure area but because you have a himalayan range right it's like a wall it's like a natural wall because of this natural wall we do not face that much cold in our country right so this is a small example the mountains playing in a weather of our a weather of any region the other example i would like to give you again on the, this malaya at or when the southwest monsoon uh, winds when they start uh, traveling uh, on uh, our subcontinent they do hit this part of uh, himalayas and uh, it uh, stops the cloud from uh, running towards china as you can see from the picture cause
Holder because our Vice President Hamid Ansari visited this place at that point of time I did told you to go through the physical map of these two places and I'm sure all the students who have carefully uh, gone through the map they might have observed that this part of uh, Africa is on the Eastern African Plateau so you will find waterfalls uh, remember uh, a lake uh, nearby Rwanda then you have Victoria Lake as well and uh, one of the biggest uh, waterfall second highest waterfall if I'm not wrong is located in uh, Kenya uh, this part is I think it is known as Victoria Fall uh, uh, South America uh, but the second highest is in this part and it is coming out of uh, it is on a plateau part. Right, dear friends, the last part uh, in today's lecture is planes. Now, when you see from the screen itself, you can see it's like a flat land, uh, right? Uh, here we can see it is a flat land, so naturally life is going to be easier. Generally speaking, planes are not higher than 200 meters. They are formed by rivers and tributaries. Rivers and its tributaries. Now rivers are flowing from either plateau or from your mountains. From there river is doing the same thing. Flowing water does a thing called erosion and deposition. Right dear friends? So because of flowing water this river it is going to erode some parts of mountain and then it is going to deposit that small pieces of sand and silt uh, on this part and by time you find layers and layers of sand and as layers and layers are climbing on top of each other the land is generally becoming flat right and because of that because of uh, formation of this part of uh, the land uh, with uh, silt and uh, soil uh, it is quite fertile so life is naturally easy on this part because it is flat and if the land is fertile so we are having or human beings are going to use it for agriculture production now if you have good agriculture production that means food security more food security means you can support life so people are going to settle down on this part of the land form they are going to uh, build houses here living is quite easy you get fertile land food is uh, available uh, constructing road and buildings is easier over here the climate is favorable things like that so it will support life so generally speaking all the populated parts of the world you will find are located on plains area isn't it so dear friends uh, I'll keep it till here right I'm sure uh, today you have learned about three major landforms I have tried my level best to explain it to you in as simple term as possible I have used as many as uh, practical and recent examples and I have also explained why I have used practical and uh, current examples because that's what is demanded by your civil services examination so dear friends, I'll keep it till here. This is uh, Prashant Mamani uh, signing off for now. Do not forget to download this PDF file from this website here. And all these people who have not subscribed, I would like to request all of you to subscribe to our services through which you would be able to go through all these lectures which are specifically designed for your general studies. Right? May it be prelims, may it be... and understanding connect the dots and once you can read between the lines there is nothing um, provided to help you achieve maximum marks in your exam right so I'll keep it till here dear friends this is Prashant Mamani signing off I'll see you all soon then enjoy your studies take care do not forget to pass me your review regarding this video if you like this video then do like hit that like button take care goodbye